In this video, we are going to study the limitations of valence bond theory. In previous video, we have studied that how valence bond theory explains us the bonding, the geometry and properties of the coordinate compounds, the complexes. But still, it has some drawbacks. What it had, that it could not explain some properties of the coordinate compounds. Like, it could not tell us about the color, about the spectra formed by the coordinate compounds. It calculated the number of unpaired electrons but still there was a difference between the magnetic moment which was calculated and measured. So this was the drawback of valence bond theory which it could not explain that why magnetic moment varies with temperature in coordinate compounds. And the main drawback of valence bond theory was it could not predict whether the compound with ligand 4 is gonna be tetrahedral or square pinner. I can explain it with an example. Now we know that nickel is a transition atom and it's gonna form coordinate compound or complexes. The first complex is this with chloride ions. The other complex is this with Cn negative ion. Now in this compound we can say that the oxidation state of nickel is plus 2. Similarly here also if we calculate the oxidation state of nickel will be plus 2. The ground state electronic configuration of nickel is 28 with this 4s2 but nickel 2 positive is this. Now if we represent this diagrammatically we will see that 8 electrons are present in 3d orbital. Now, See, chloride ions are here. Chloride ions are going to overlap with these empty orbitals. According to valence bond theory, the metal atom provides empty orbitals and the fully filled orbitals of the ligand overlaps with them after hybridization of this. So that means this happens and it is seen that in this complex, sp3 hybridization is seen and tetrahedral structure is present. So here these four orbitals hybridize and give sp3 hybridization with that means tetrahedral geometry. But in this complex we can see that same thing should happen because the configuration of nickel will be same plus 2. This should be happen and these will be the empty orbitals. But actually this does not happen. Because of Cn negative these unpaired electrons combine together in one orbital and make 1d orbital empty. So what happens now this is also empty orbital in nickel. So according to valence bond theory the empty orbitals overlap with the ligands. So in this the first four empty orbitals 1, 2, 3, 4 that means d sp2 hybridization will occur and these hybrid orbitals will overlap with fully filled orbitals of C and negative and will form this. This hybridization dsp2 means square planar geometry. This was seen experimentally that dsp2 hybridization will be here because it was seen that it had square planar structure. So valence bond theory could not explain that why this combining, why the, this electron jumped to the previous T orbital and made it fully filled. The valence bond theory could not explain this thing. This is the main drawback of valence bond theory that whether inner d orbitals are going to be used in hybridization or not. 